welcome my viewers and students to another lesson on first row transition elements. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I'm sorry for not coming online for some time now. It has not been easy, but I'm happy. Professor Zema, I don't expect it's happy to be here today. We will be looking at the first row transition elements. The transition elements are all matters of economic importance. As you can see on the periodic table shown there, these are the elements that are, color, uh, that are in orange color. These elements, the one we'll be concentrating, are the ones in the first row from scandium with symbol SC to zinc, symbol ZN. We have the D-block elements. They are also called D-block elements because they have their D orbitals partially or completely filled. The L-block elements are also called the inner transition elements. The L-block are those ones from lanternite or the actinite. They are the one below in the periodic table. That group below there from La to LU and then AC to LR, they are the air block elements, but they also have D block elements. So for these first row elements, transition elements, we'll be looking at scandium to zinc, but zinc in group 12 with symbol ZN is not a transition element because it has its D block elements completely filled. So the elements zinc, cadmium, and mercury are not transitional elements. We will be focusing from scandium to zinc, but know that zinc is not a transitional element. Don't fail to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. The objective of the lesson, by the end of the lesson, the student should be able to identify the first row transition elements of the periodic table, write their electronic configuration, describe their periodic trend, identify the oxidation states of some compounds of the first row transition element, and explain their magnetic air properties. The first row transition element is elements that are from group 3. To group 12 elements scandium a symbol sc the group 4 you see titanium there symbol ti you see vanadium symbol v in group 5 and then 6 you see chromium you see manganese in group 7 iron in group 8 cobalt symbol c or in group 9 and then nickel in group 10 and copper in group 11 and zinc in group 12. The atomic numbers are shown on the board. Atomic number increases from group 3 to group 12. Scandium 21, titanium 22, vanadium 23, chromium 24, manganese 25, Ion 26, cobalt 27, nickel 28, copper 29, and zinc 30. Their electronic configuration also increases. One major thing we observe in the electronic configuration is that most of these elements have partially filled D orbitals, except uh, copper and the zinc that have fully filled D orbitals. But zinc is not considered as a transition element because even as an atom and as an ion, its orbitals are filled. Transition elements are also known as transition metals and they are elements that have partially filled D orbitals, as I said. IOPAC defines transition element as an element having a D subshell that is partially filled with electrons or an element that has the ability to form stable cations with an incompletely filled d orbital 
The lanthanides and actinides elements, that is the earth block, are called inner transition metals and are sometimes considered to be transition metals as well. We will learn about those groups later. We'll look at the transition elements now and their electronic configuration. Starting from scandium, atomic number 21, we, we are told that it has a field argon orbital and then it has one electron in the D subshell and then two field S subshell. We know that the S subshell is always filled before the D orbitals. Titanium, vanadium up to zinc. If we look at zinc now, atomic number 30, we will observe that zinc has all D subshell filled and also the 4S shell is also filled. Another interesting element in this uh, transition element is chromium. If we look at chromium atomic number 24, after vanadium, you see chromium. It has all its D subshell, only one, one electron, and then the 4S with one electron. And we, call, we say that that metal chromium has maximum number of unpaired D electrons. Therefore, this transition metal is very hard. And then it cannot, you know, it will be difficult for it to lose its electron because it, it possesses a maximum number of unpaired D electrons. And the transition elements are very hard and possess metallic character. This indicates that both metallic and covalent bonding can exist together in these transitional elements. But if we look at zinc, as I said, it's not considered as a transition element because its D orbital and S orbital are completely filled. Copper has a completely filled 3D orbital and it is very stable. But copper is a transition element or transition metal. Chromium that has partially filled 3D uh, orbital is also a transition element. Well, look at the ions that are formed. The ion formed from scandium. If scandium loses three electrons, its electronic configuration will be the neon structure and 3s2, three pieces. And that is telling us that scandium does not have a D orbital. So scandium 3 plus ion is not a transition element because there is no D block orbital in it. Titanium 2 plus ion. That means it has lost its 4s orbitals. It will now have only two electrons in the D orbital. It's a transition metal. We go down like that until we come to zinc. Zinc is completely filled. So zinc 2 ion is completely filled. It is not a transition element. But copper, copper 2 ion, we find out that copper 2 ion has one electron that is not paired. So it is a transition element. So all these 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus you see in this uh, uh, element tells you that they have lost 3 electrons, 2 electrons, or 4 electrons. And that is why their electronic configuration of ion have changed. The electronic configuration of an atom is different from the electronic configuration of an ion as shown on the slide. Transition elements form what we call their magnetic compounds and also paramagnetic compounds and ferromagnetism. Their magnetic compound is when an element is not attracted to an electric external magnetic field and because they have paired electrons. Elements like zinc. Zinc. The D orbitals are completely filled 
so it does not attract any external magnetic field element like copper copper atom the d orbital we are not talking about the s orbital here we are talking about the d orbitals the d orbitals of copper they are completely filled so a copper atom will not attract a magnetic field the presence of an unpaired electron in the 4s orbital does not contribute to the spin at all it does not contribute like copper you are seeing one electron there it has nothing to do with uh, diamagnetism but most of the transition metals are paramagnetic due to the presence of unpaired electrons in the m minus 1d orbital hence they are easily attracted by magnetic field what do we mean by that when you take a magnet and send it closer to this metal they will attract for example vanadium ion it has three unpaired electrons the other two electrons or the other uh, shell d or beta are vacant so this vanadium ion will attract electron towards a magnetic field so also chromium 3 ion chromium 3 ion will attract electrons it has on uh, single uh, electrons unpaired electrons in its d orbital copper 2 plus ion has one unpaired electron so it can attract there are uh, elements like cobalt and nickel they show high paramagnetism what we do we mean they will call them a ferromagnetic materials such as iron nickel and cobalt as well as their alloys you know they can retain their magnetic properties when the magnetic field is even removed they are very very magnetic they attain permanent magnetic moments hence they are called ferromagnetic uh, elements The properties of the uh, transition metals. The transition metals or D block elements are all metals. They form hard metals with high densities, which indicate the presence of covalent bonds. They have high tensile strength and they are dark type. Transition elements have melting and boiling points. They have strong metallic bonding and have low ionization energy. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. They form compounds with profound catalytic activity. They form stable complexes. They form variable oxidation states. And they form compounds that are often paramagnetic. We have said that paramagnetic compounds are formed because of their singleness of the electrons in their, atom, in their D or beta they have unpaired d orbitals variable oxidation states transition metals have variable oxidation state because there are 3d electrons are available for bond formation for example manganese with electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2 pieces 3s2 3 pieces 3d5 4s2 can lose two four s electrons if it loses its two four electrons it will give a plus two oxidation state as in mno manganese oxide and then it can also lose two four s and two three d electrons to give a plus four oxidation state as a manganese dioxide and it can also lose two four s and four three d electrons to give a process oxidation state as a manganese O4 2 minus. In addition, the difference in the successive ionization energies of transition metals are small. This allows the formation of stable ions at each stage. Variable oxidation states. We can see that scandium has can lose all its 2 4s electron and one 
3D electron and the compound is scadium trichloride. That is the oxidation state that scandium can attain. It can also have a plus two oxidation state. Titanium can have a plus two oxidation state, plus three and plus four. Vanadium can have plus two, plus three, plus four and plus five. And chromium plus two, plus three, plus five and plus six oxidation state. Manganese plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 6, plus 7, and iron plus 2, plus 3, cobalt plus 2, plus 3, nickel plus 2, plus 3, and copper plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3. They have variable oxidation state because they can lose their 4S electrons and also some of their 3D electrons. The colored nature of the transition elements. The transition elements have vacant D orbitals. So due to the presence of vacant D orbital, they produce colored compounds. Transition metal ions are not naturally colored. They only become colored when they form compounds with other ions or molecules, such as potassium dichromate, orange, ion 2 sulfate green, cobalt 2 chloride, red, copper to sulfate blue and nickel sulfate green. The uses of the transition element. Some of these transition elements occur everywhere, like iron. Iron form the rings in our spiral notebook and the cutlery in our kitchen. To automobiles, sheep building and the hemoglobin of blood, we use iron. And then titanium is useful in the manufacturing of lightweight, durable products such as bicycle frames, artificial uh, chips, and jewelry. And then we have chromium that is useful as a protective plating on plumbing fixtures and automatic detailing. We also have titanium that is useful in the engine of Boeing 747, used in pipes pumps and reaction vessel. We have vanadium as a catalyst. We have copper now. We have copper wares, you know. We have copper fillings. They are very, very useful. Even uh, for artifacts, they are very, very useful. Transition elements are very useful to society. The study questions. What are transition elements? Write the electronic configuration of the first row D block elements. Classify the following as diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic compounds. Cobalt 2 ion, chromium 3 ion, zinc 2 ion, copper 1 ion, copper 2 ion, manganese 4 ion, scandium atom, and nickel 2 ion. 4. Why is copper a transition element and zinc is not? Thank you for listening to the end of this video. I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. See you in the next class.